Change. Change is defined as the act or instance of becoming different, a transformation. As we have all discovered this year, change is one of the only constants in this world. And in many ways, change is our birthright. We are the generation that was brought into this world as beacons of hope following the chaos of 9-11. We remember waters rising not once, but twice in our communities, whisking away entire realities in its path. Budget cuts and financial crisis marred our families and schools. We took all of this in stride and have evolved through this punctuated equilibrium. This year, we faced something out of a movie, a global pandemic that has irreversibly altered our worldviews, our community, our senior year. The number of should have been's it has caused is impossible to process and makes me furious. Furious that a tiny bit of genetic code and protein so insignificant, scientists can't even agree if it's considered living or not, has stolen what should have been our most cherished memories of high school. Then again, maybe it hasn't stolen as much as we think. We cannot allow these past few months to diminish or define all that we have experienced together in the past 13 years. That's about 2,340 days filled with the big moments like state titles, music awards, and academic success. More importantly, that's 2,340 days filled with the little moments, the shared eye rolls at morning announcements, that awkward time you ran into a, a teacher you were avoiding, and, or surviving a foreign language with the help of Google Translate, and just being together, sharing the same experience. Shouldn't those 2,340 days filled with memories outweigh the 70 days that COVID robbed us of? We have worked too hard to have our senior year be upstaged by something much smaller than a mosquito. It has taken so much from us already. Do not let it steal this happiness too. So gather all your rage at this unprecedented time, as they say, and channel it into defiant joy. Let our joy have the final word, despite all the changes we are forced to accept. Now, as we graduate in a world that looks so different than what we imagined, we face yet another challenge, one that will come to define the rest of our lives. But I believe, I have to believe, that every uncertainty and triumph that we have faced prepared us for this very moment by making us resilient to a world in flux. Now, as we step forward to take our place, it is our responsibility to once again become beacons of hope in a tenuous time. However, we no longer have those amiable smiles that cheered our parents up like when we were little. I don't know about you, but I'm not cute enough anymore to pull that one off. Instead, we must learn to use the changing world to bring hope if anyone has been given the skills to take a fractured reality and build it into something stronger than it was before, it's us, made into a class of 20, right here. And I can say that with utter confidence because we already have. Look around you. How many old friends did you become closer with despite being separated by physical distance? How many teachers did you build a more personal relationship with over Zoom? As a class, how much more cohesiveness and belonging developed over shared disappointment? If this isn't quantifiable proof that we can look a crisis right between its eyes and use it to become better than we were, I don't know what is. So, when each one of us steps forward to receive our hard-fought diplomas, be reminded that we are also stepping up into our responsibility to use the lessons we've learned in these years to prove to the world that change is not a destruction of what was, but an invitation to become what will be. It is not an end, but a transformation. I can guarantee many changes ahead, hopefully of a less apocalyptic variety. And it's up to each one of us to use those trans changes to transform the world into a place of more possibilities, more hope, more joy. Thank you.